This episode is brought to you by Paramount Plus. Get in, loser! Mean Girls is now streaming on Paramount Plus. Join Katie Heron as she meets the plastics and Tina Fey's new twist on the modern classic. Get ready for more of the rumors, backstabbing, and jokes you loved from the original movie with some fetch surprises. Rated PG 13. Wear pink and head to ParamountPlus.com to try it free. Survivor 46 is here and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. This is Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Central Texas Life. And I want to introduce you to Felix Chiota. Yes, ma'am. Who I just met recently at Marie's. And we've had, you know, we've had Marie's um, Wine Bar uh, folks on and talking about that wonderful place. And I happened to, happened to meet you there uh, with your lovely lady friend. And it was just so wonderful to meet someone who has come to Central Texas, in your case, from a long way off, Zimbabwe. Yes. And made this your home. 28 years it's been. (laughs) But yeah, I I definitely, first of all, I want to say thank you to you and Rogue Media for having me here today. And it was a pleasure meeting you and Mike. uh, And uh, my my girlfriend, Mandy, loved uh, chatting with you. And she'll be here this weekend, as a matter of fact. Oh, good. But uh, yes, uh, Waco's been home for me for 28 years now. It's 29 years in August, so... In 1995, I uh, landed here in uh, Waco to uh, pursue my lifelong dream of being a pilot, and the blessing and the opportunity to do it in America was something that I, I never thought would be a reality when I was growing up uh, yeah. back then. Well, tell me a little bit about your growing up years in Zimbabwe, and you have a lot of family still there, so I'm sure you go back and forth to visit. How long a trip is that? 8,000 miles long. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so it uh, typically takes, uh, I've done it a few times, as you can imagine, um, as far as the days go, it's probably two to two and a half days. Wow. With multiple connections in between. Uh, unfortunately, if you want to save money, that's what it takes to make stops in Europe um, and a couple of stops in Africa before you finally get to your destination. So I've gotten used to it. Uh, I don't go as often as I as I would love to because of work commitments. Sure. My life is here now and the cost, of course. But uh, growing up in Zimbabwe, I, um, um, I, grew, I was raised mostly by my grandparents and my aunts. Um, my mother remarried, and so, uh, so I, have, I have three half siblings, two brothers and a sister. Two of them are still in Zimbabwe. One just got married. My sister has got two, two, uh, two children. I've got a nephew and a niece. She's married over there, and she helps. They two, uh, the two of them, help take care of my mother. Mm-hmm. And then the brother who comes after me, he's in England, and he's got a, a daughter and a son as well. Um, so I, connect, I, stay, I stay connected to them. I have uh, certainly an extended family that's, that's, that's there, aunts and uncles. I've got a, a, I, can, I couldn't tell you how many nieces and nephews I have now <laughs> between all you know, uh, second cousins and such um, over the years. But uh, it, I, being raised with my grandmother, it was challenging. Um, I, I lived in a neighborhood that um, certainly was not like the neighborhood I live in now. But uh, it, it helped me be ambitious to try and better my life. Worked hard in school. Uh, when I was going to school, it was around the time, at least when I could remember, that uh, segrega- segregation was just ending. So the white rule it was over. They were integrating the schools. And I had the privilege of, of going to a school that just had been recently integrated. So I created that integration of schools and, and my age at the time for the gift of being able to speak English the way I used to speak when I came here 28 years ago. I don't think I speak it as well as I used, as <laughs> I used to back then. But uh, so th- it, I, got, I, 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 I fell in love with education. Um, and along the way, some, something about aviation just t- spoke to me. Mm-hmm. When I would see airplanes flying in the air, I would just wonder what it was like to be up there. And uh, then, Like a bird. <laughs> like a bird. And uh, somewhere along the way, I thought, you know, I... I would like to be that person too. Yeah. I think I'd love to fly airplanes. And we had a neighbor, we had a neighbor who was actually a flight attendant. So I picked his brain a, a little bit. He was was a flight attendant for Air Zimbabwe, and um, um, 
And so that kind of started to grow. And I would speak with my mom um, when I would visit with her. Um, and she encouraged me to, to do whatever I needed to do yeah. to pursue it. I, initially, I thought, actually, I'd, I'd try to go through Air Zimbabwe or the Air Force when I was older, when I was at that age where I could apply, which I did. Right. And that, that didn't happen for me, unfortunately. But uh, because of a series of, of events, my, uh, s my stepfather passed away. And he, had a, uh, he left to the side a little bit of money. And me being the oldest, by the way, um, of, of the four children that my mother has, um, my mother and I and, and the other family talked about, if I want to be a pilot, we got to take you to a place where you can do this because it's not working out at home. Right. So with that money, um, my mother spoke with a few people that um, were able to find schools in the U.S. At least in Zimbabwe in 1993, 94, there was no such thing as the Internet where I could just Google at Baylor or any other right. aviation university. Yeah, it's, so, it's hard to imagine. That yeah. doesn't seem like that long ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was a bit of a challenge for me to learn what was available. Right. I knew a little bit about America well, from watching TV. Uh, my grandmother loved the soap operas, right? Dallas, Falcon mm, Crest, oh, yeah. Dynasty, <laughs> uh, Sanford and Son, things like oh, that. Yeah. So, so there was a little bit of uh, awareness of what, America, what, what life in America was, at least the illusion of what it was like. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, uh, so I would go to the embassy, educate myself, write letters. I applied to Baylor and a few other schools which were recommended to me that could possibly offer what I was pursuing to, um, as a degree program. And um, Baylor chose me. Interestingly enough, of course, that was around the time when Waco was not was in the news for not very popular reasons. Uh, yeah, but still, mid-90s, <laughs> right, yes. following the Branch Davidian. Yes, yes right. but uh, nevertheless, I something drew me to Waco. I, I, I knew little, again, there was no internet. Um, right. At Baylor University, the Baptist College, because I, I did go to my uh, Baptist uh, churches when I was mm -hmm. growing I up. I wondered if there was you know, a mm -hmm. religious component, too. Correct. So mm -hmm. so there was, a, if, any, if any connection, it was the, the Baptist church yeah. and uh, Texas, really. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Um, and so, in, in, um, I, I believe I took off on the 22nd of August, 1995. I landed here August 24th. I was tired. This is back when it was Madison Cooper Airport, if you recall. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh, yeah. And um, I was met with my Baylor folks. Very overwhelming, Anne. Um, I'm 20 years old. It had time. to have been. Yeah. Um, Such a strange So place. I tell people this, and, I, and obviously it's been a long time now, and I, I have to think quite a bit about what it was like, but... Uh, for the first time in my life, I'm realizing you're a minority. This is life for you now. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. And, and going to Baylor campus, you know, it's, it's, that's what it was, especially back then. Right. So adjusting was really difficult. It was really challenging. Um, mm. Just being able to communicate. I cannot understand them. They cannot understand me. Um, making friends, the, the food. Uh, it, it was... Um, I, mean, I didn't come from a, from a, from a place of affluence, so what I, some of the things I would see here uh, it just they blew my mind. I, I'll bet, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, but fortunately, because Baylor the way that they, they they have the international students program set up, it was very accommodating to mm -hmm. people exactly in my situation. Mm -hmm. How can we make a space for you? How can we make? Yeah, did you know the Pittmans? I did not. Jean and Ann Pittman, they were always very involved with the uh, international students. I did not know them, no. <clears throat> they, um, they might have already kind of retired from that at that point, but, I yeah. worked a lot with uh, Dr. June Rose Garrett. I don't, know if, I don't know if that name rings a bell, but she was, at, uh, she was over the international students program. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Beth Walker. Um, anyway, um, so I, again, I got to meet other international students. Um, went to Highland Baptist Church, was involved in mm -hmm. that quite a bit. And well, they we were, were actually, there at the same time then. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I bring Baptist, uh, Highland Baptist Church and, and, and of several other benefactors along the way because, uh, in this conversation, chiefly because as I was going through my education program at Baylor, though financially the money was there when I first began for my, for my stepfather's passing, uh, life insurance um, uh, uh, proceeds, and my mother was, a, was, a, was an active physician at the time, so she was doing quite well, and the, the Zimbabwe economy was also doing well in the early 90s and mid-90s. But things changed, and they kind of they changed rather rapidly. Really? Um, so it became difficult for my mother to keep me in school. So I had to lean on. I had to reach out and lean on a lot of people for some financial support because um, if you're not able to to stay in school, you have no business being in the United States. Right. So 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 there was a very stressful time for me. Uh, oh my goodness! In the middle of my education. Uh -huh. um, and trying to be a pilot as well, the, the challenge of being a professional pilot and trying to get the academic side at, at Baylor, 
those two expenses were a lot more than I, I, I was aware of at the time, unfortunately. But um, my faith in mm -hmm. the, the community that, that I was in, the Waco community, Baptist Church, Baylor University, and people that were connected with the university, they, um, I owe them a lot of uh, debt of gratitude mm -hmm. because financially, th there's just no way I would have made it. Wow. Um, I had, a, I had the blessing of tutoring uh, uh, several students. I was, uh, apparently I was pretty decent in calculus back in the day. <laughs> so one of, one of the uh, kids I was tutoring, um, I got to meet, I got to know his parents, got, we became friends, and they became so invested in my dreams and my pursuits. And so they were very instrumental also in trying mm -hmm. to make sure that I stay in school and, uh, and follow my American dream. Oh, that's, so, yeah, that's a, a tremendous story. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Waco has been a tremendous place for me. and. Um, over the course of my career, obviously, I travel a lot as a professional mm -hmm. pilot. People always say, why are you doing in Waco? <laughs> and, you came to Baylor and stayed. Yeah. And if I sit to tell my story to every person that I meet, I will never get any, anything done. <laughs> but I, 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 I am here and will always be here for a long, long time because there is no me. There is no professional pilot Felix. There is no Chiora Aviation without this community mm -hmm. it's just what it is mm -hmm. and I'm very grateful for that mm -hmm. well now you're professionally you you have done a lot of education yourself uh, as a as a flight instructor and correct in fact um, when I graduated like, like most people we go down the path if you're not going through the military you go down the path of becoming a teacher uh, yourself mm -hmm. to get your hours then you can move on so my first job was flight instructing at uh, the McGregor Airport for yeah. one of my mentors and great friends Jim Allman um, who is actually involved in the Freedom Ball that's happening this weekend, which we'll yeah, visit about right, at some yeah. point. <laughs> but uh, so I, I was one of his, uh, um, one of his first flight instructors uh, right after I graduated from Baylor and TSTC. Um, and beyond that, I, I, uh, I, went, I, was, I started flying professionally. I flew for an airline for a little bit. Then I fly now for a company that operates the largest business, um, is the largest business jet operator in the, in the world. And I, and I do that type of flying, and I love the, what, the kind of flying that I do. Um, so, again, we talked about how grateful I am, and so when somebody has been blessed and, and been as successful as I have been in life, what do you do to sort of express that gratitude mm -hmm. uh, um, empirically, if you will? Yeah, how do, how, you, do you, how do you give back? How do you give back? And the best way I know how to was um, to start a fly school. Yeah. Um, it's the fly school business, if you talk to anybody, it's... Uh, um, it's not easy. Um, any, 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 any aviation business, as a matter of fact, there's an adage that we say, we all say in aviation, and it starts off with a question. The question is, how do you make a small fortune in aviation? You want to take a guess at the answer to that question? No, right? No, right. You start with a large fortune. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, all now, that, how do you get a million dollars? Well, you start off with a <laughs> yeah. million dollars, and then you yeah. yeah, all that to say, it's just a challenging business, but I'm passionate about aviation. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've, I've been an adjunct lecturer at Baylor. Mm -hmm. I've worked with the FAA as far as part of the, the testing uh, program for pilots that are going through di different certifications. They uh, assign contractors across the U.S. to do uh, specific exams so that pilots can advance. And of course, I have my flight school, Chiota Aviation, that's at Waco. Um, now, is that primarily uh, an instructor kind of position, or is it... Um your commercial so uh, what, what we offer uh, flying that you do for we, at, at, at the flight school we offer people that like you and Mike's for example mm -hmm. you got some extra time you want to fly say after this uh, this podcast you want to go to the airport and that's a beautiful get your day exactly <laughs> get your flight lesson we, we pair you up with an instructor that that works with your schedule mm -hmm. um, and we put you in an airplane that you feel is best for you you, tr you train on your schedule and as, and when you complete the course of training that the, F, the Federal Aviation Administration requires you to complete, you go get tested and you get your, uh, you get your flight test done and you become a private pilot. Mm -hmm. So once we've trained you, we give you the, the opportunity to rent one of our airplanes if you wanted to go visit your grandkids, your oh, friends, yeah. oh, go wow. do a weekend getaway. So, yeah. we, so we offer flight training and aircraft rental. So what I, I say giving back because for me, when, I, when somebody graduates from Baylor or TSTC or have people from, two of my instructors actually are from Illinois, how do they get the hours so they can move on? They need somebody that can open their doors and say, come and teach for me. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. So these guys come in, 
they get their hours, they move on. So I've, I've mentored a lot of these young uh, that you have, aviators yeah. that have gone on to be captains in, in, in uh, regional airlines and major airlines. Mm -hmm. So that's a small uh, part of my uh, contribution. Um, this event we're going to talk about, I, I volunteer at the Freedom Ball as well. So it's, just, it's, a, small, it's a small thing. Uh, we donate flights to different causes uh, for fundraisers. People reach out to us and say... That's a yeah. great yeah. idea yeah. to have... Ah, I haven't thought about that. Yeah. I mean, when I serve on a committee that needs a, yeah. a, a good, a good uh, item for their silent or audible auction. Exactly, that would exactly. Be <laughs> yes, we're, we're doing <laughs> that this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there's so much that you're, you're doing here in Central Texas. Um, you, you have other interests, though. I understand you, you like to learn languages. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I've, I've, Spanish, I probably, I've been working on Spanish and, English and German for a long, long time. Oh, really? But I'm not, yeah. not, uh, I don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go back to basics. But my other passion actually is, uh, um, I, have my, I have a guitar that I, that I pick up and try to teach myself. And sometimes I've taken lessons because I, I, I definitely love that. Yeah. Uh, and and um, it's, it's, it'll take me as long as it's going to take me to learn. But uh, that's one of my ambitions is to learn how to play um, uh, a guitar. Um, Are you a singer? Are you want to play Spanish guitar is there I, I just have an acoustic guitar yeah, just play my uh my singing is uh no no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't sing well um certainly my I what well, part of my uh my lifestyle is it certainly involves uh staying physically active so I love anything uh mm -hmm. that gets my blood pumping and uh so I spend a lot of time at the gym. I, I, I run. I've got a bike um, that I ride occasionally. So mm -hmm. yeah, those are some of the things that keep my that keep, clear my mind. Um, I'm very active. I love meditation as well. So that's something that I've really found to be beneficial for my oh, really? well-being. Yeah. yeah. Any suggestions on how to start that kind of practice? practice. There are a lot of free apps uh -huh. or even YouTube that, that, that you can participate in a guided meditation. Really? And just learn your way around. Mm -hmm. But eventually it's just... Uh, stillness and yeah. yeah just we don't have a lot of that in our modern day <laughs> life no no sometimes just, just need taking to that pause. time to yeah yeah sit and sit and reflect and be quiet yes it's it's, it's, it's challenging but uh, just, yeah yeah but uh the more lucky than lucky anything the more you practice it the the I guess perhaps the easier it gets and more you feel it more of the but reward. i would think if you're up in an airplane and seeing the world below that there there would be some opportunity for that quiet oh, reflection definitely. too. Yeah, definitely. I'll tell you for some of the best times that I've that I that I have said, man, I, I I'm grateful that I'm a pilot. Is I would say, for example, tonight when the sun sets, most of the flying activity slows down. Mm -hmm. It's going to be at this time of the year. It's the air is smooth, the skies are clear. You can see as far away as you want. Yeah. Practically, you get up there to three or four thousand feet. If you're in the Waco area, you can call out Houston. You can call out Austin. You can call out Dallas. And just the tranquility because of the stillness of the night, the, the quietness over the frequencies because nobody's out there flying, the hum of the engine. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's definitely a way, another way to meditate. Yeah, wa yeah. waxing poetic <laughs> <laughs> about all that. Uh, you do love to travel, though, speaking of, speaking of which. Any favorite destinations? Wow, that's a great one. I mean, other than home, too. Other than home. Yeah. I love San Diego. And I've, I've, I've gone to, probably recently, I've gone to Turks and Caicos in the last year and a half, um, four or five times. Really? I've got a great friend of mine that has an airplane that we, he, likes to, he likes me to join him on his flights. Uh, he's a pilot himself, so we go out there and spend a few days. So I've actually taken Mandy as well. But it's, it's again, <coughs> another place to just to find some tranquility and, and peace is just by the water, right? Just mm -hmm. hearing the, the, the waves crashing into the, into the, beat, into the um, sand. And just walking in it, and yeah, it's it's that's definitely another place that I enjoy uh, escaping to when I can. Oh, sounds yeah. delightful. Yeah, um, it's just really wonderful to meet somebody like yourself. Overcame a lot of challenges along the way, yeah. traveled a long way to get here, and we're so grateful for that. I I am I am too. I really <coughs> am. Um, again, this is a lovely opportunity to, to share my story and. Uh, to let people know that uh, that we're out there to help you with your flight training needs, and I'm always looking for opportunities where I can serve and and do something small, in, in, yeah. is, is whatever I can. Uh, if it can help somebody, then I, f I feel like I've I've I'm, every day I'm trying to do something that can help somebody else the way I've been helped.
Yeah. Well, I like to end these little visits with a questionnaire. It's similar to the one the late, great James Lipton would use on Inside the Actor's Studio. I don't know if you're familiar uh, yes, with that yes, or yes. not. But At least the skits. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your favorite word? Wow. Actually. Actually, really? <laughs> Only because I use it frequently. Um, yeah, it's, I guess... To, uh, let me try that again. That's just a, a word I use frequently. The word, my favorite word would be, I've never been asked that, so let me, I might have to think about that for a second. <laughs> favorite word. Um, wow. What's yours? <laughs> don't, don't, don't go doing that. <laughs> um, I don't know, but I've asked this question of so many guests, you know, and I've, I've heard, you know, so many responses like I'll just pull one out of there, you know, possibility actually, or, you know, yes or love or, you know, I've those used kind it, of things. Actually, I've used it today, probably at least twice now. Mm -hmm. Gratitude. Gratitude. Yes. That's a good one. I use it every you day. You win on that one. I use it every day. You get the gold star on that one. Yeah. Well, what's your least favorite word? Failure. Yeah. I think failure is an attitude. Because mm -hmm. anything you try to do, you may not get the outcome that you want, but you still learn something from it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, what turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Music. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It sounds like you, you enjoy making music, learning yeah. to make music. And uh, speaking of music, I am... Um, Part of part of my my uh, this 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 vision I have I had of coming to America was was expressed in part through music. Uh huh. Really. One of my one of my fa was the my favorite artists I should say is Bruce Springsteen and yeah. he tells great stories. And the first time I met him was in 1988. I didn't meet him. I beg your pardon. I, I went to a a, con a, a concert, uh -huh. a human rights concert in Zimbabwe, had to do with apartheid in South Africa and all those things. So he was there and other musicians. Tracy Chapman, for example. Oh yeah. Peter Gabriel, Sting. Oh my goodness. A lot of international what artists concert, were there. Yeah. So, 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 and my, my stepfather actually introduced me to his music, and so I just started, started listening to the tapes, um, and I just started, I just fell in love with his storytelling, and actually, uh, Dave, Dave and I, last year in February, we saw we, he and I went up to Dallas and saw him in concert. Talking so, about yeah. Dave Innes. Yes. Oh, okay, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, um, listening to Bruce, um, Land of Hope and Dreams. Mm. Uh, it's. I mean, I listen to that, that's what I think about is America, yeah. and uh, this is the land of open dreams. And every day I wake up, I'm given an opportunity to live that dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. you're grateful for that. Too. Yeah, yes, indeed. Uh, then what turns you off creatively, or emotionally, or spiritually? Mm. Suffering. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard. That's hard. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. It's a part of life. Indeed. We don't escape it. No. But um, there's always tomorrow, and we can live to uh, live another day, live through it. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about music, but what is your favorite sound? The ocean. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I hear that many, many yeah. times. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's. I would say it's a tie. The ocean and the sound of a jet engine or a propeller. I was going to say, you yeah. talked about that. You yeah. spoke so beautifully of that, yes, yes, of that yes. moment of, yeah. of solitude and mm. hearing that. Yeah, exactly. Well, what is your least favorite sound? Alarm clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you have, you have executed your, your dream of being in aviation so beautifully. But what other profession would you have liked to have tried? Uh, what other profession? When I was in school, I thought uh, I would have been a, I thought I wanted to be a history professor. Mm -hmm. So that'll be, that'll be in the one. And I guess I, I, I dab you've a little bit in that. it. You've kind of done that. Yeah. 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 You've kind of done Well, what job do you know you would not want to do? No, thank you. I hope my mother doesn't hear this, but I would want to be a doctor. <laughs> she's, a, she's, a, she's a doctor herself, like I said earlier on, but 
I don't I don't think I, I could handle that. Yeah. 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 I, and I've heard that from other people. Yeah. Too. We appreciate them. Yeah. And, yes, we do. You know, but man, you know, that would that would be tough. Well, one last question: When you arrive at the pearly gates, what do you want to hear God say? I never left you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And welcome home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. Well, it has been a delight, Felix, to get to know you a little bit better, to hear your story, and and just to celebrate the fact that you made those decisions when you were young and persevered through some hardship in all that. And here we are today talking about your business. And so how can folks get in touch with you at uh, Chioda Aviation? So we're, we're quite active <laughs> on social media. Um, our website is uh, yeah. chiodaaviation.com. Um, you can look me up personally on social media. I'm on there. Um, our email is fly at chiodaaviation.com. My number is 254-855-3424. Feel free to call me directly. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we're easy to find. Yeah. Um, we have signage at the Awakeo Regional Airport as well. If, if, you're, if you're on your way there, mm-hmm. they can help. The, uh, the folks at the Texas Aero can help you find us if you get lost. I have no yeah. doubt there are people who, on their bucket list, yeah. are to spend some time with you yeah. Yeah. and learn how to fly. We'd and love to. Yeah, yeah. Well, all the best to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me for today, and yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, this, by the way, um, I've, I meant to warn you that this this, this was my, this is or was my first podcast. So <laughs> good, good, good. Well, I hope you yeah. found, you found the experience at least not too intimidating. No, not at all. <laughs> I, I I felt really relaxed and thank well, you for good. for being such a host. Well, it's just been a delight for Wonderful me. Host, I appreciate yeah. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. All right. And thank you for being with us. We hope you'll join us again next time on Central Texas Life. Bye bye. Central Texas Life with Ann Harder is part of the Rogue Media family. Be sure to check out our other shows at roguemedianetwork.com. Please rate this show five stars on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Life with Ann Harder. This has been a Rogue Media Network 